Have you ever wondered why there are four Gospels? Why isn't there just one? Sometimes it can even be confusing or challenging to us when we read similar parts of the story in the different Gospels. And in fact, a big question comes up is, are they contradicting each other? Those opposed to the Bible and opposed to God's ways like to point that out and say, wow, the Bible doesn't even agree. Matthew says this, Mark says that, Luke says this, and John says something else totally different. Why is that? So I want to take just a couple of minutes and really look at this question of why are there four different Gospels? In fact, there was a, a movie that came out a number of years ago that was about an attempt of assassination on a president. And and the movie is probably really only covering a very short amount of time, but yet the same scene is repeated over and over and over and over again. And you get to see this scene from many different points of view. You see it from the president who's attempting to be assassinated. You see it from the Secret Service. You see it from the assassin. You see it from different people in the audience who were there for this speech. And you see it from different passerbyers. So we learned something with thinking along those lines, and that is that if you have a different perspective, if you have a different point of view, you're going to see different parts of the same thing. And in fact, that doesn't necessarily mean they're contradictory. That just means you're seeing something different. Here's a real example for you. I love to drink coffee. And uh, here's a coffee mug. We give these mugs away to our guests who come to our in-person services. And if I was to hold this mug up, like, like I am right now, and I asked you, what, what do you see? Tell me about this mug. And I'll, I'll tip the mug just this way a little bit. You can see there's a different color on the inside. But if, but if I were to ask you, what do you see? Describe this mug to me. Well, you'd say, well, uh, it, it's a black mug, and there's a, a logo of Hope Church on, that you can see. And if I tip it, you can see this different lighter color on the inside. Now, that would all be true and right and accurate. But if I was to describe this mug to you, here's what I would tell you. I would tell you that it's a black mug and that there's this lighter color on the inside. But I would tell you what I see is that the, the handle is on the left. And the, I see a, a heart. I see the number 817 inside of the heart. And I see the words hopechurch.com. And you might say, what do you mean? Well, let me turn the mug around. You see, I was looking at it from one perspective, and you're looking at it from another. Now, I clearly see the logo that you saw, and you can clearly see the the, the heart and the the web address that I saw. You see, in that moment when I asked the question, describe the mug, and you described it with the logo, and I described it with the heart, we were both right. We weren't both wrong. We were just looking at it from different perspectives. So the Gospels are sort of like that. They're, They're... Four distinct views, but only one good news. In fact, here's a a, a classic example uh, where people want to say that there's contradictions in the Gospels. And we're going to look at, this is just one place, but it's a place where it's, it's the angels at the tomb after Jesus has been resurrected. When we look at what Luke says in Luke 24, 4, it says, while they were perplexed, about this, behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel. So they're talking about angels, and Luke says two men. Well, then when we read the same account in the Gospel of Mark, Mark 16, 5, it says, And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. Now, what's going on here? Luke says two, Mark says one. Who's right? Who's wrong? What, what, what's going on here? Well, there is the case that both men can be 100% right. You see, Mark doesn't say there was only one man there, and Luke doesn't say that there was only two people. You see, we have two different writers who have two different backgrounds, who have two different messages to two different audiences describing the same situation. It's just sort of like looking at things from different sides of the coffee mug. They can both be right. So here's what we need to know. When it comes to reading through the Gospels and thinking about, well, there's four Gospels but only one message, here's what we need to know is that each Gospel was written by a different author. And each Gospel was written to a specific group of people. 
And each gospel has a different focus or a different theme behind it. So we have to take all of that into account when we find places in the story, like the description of the angels at the tomb. So that's just an example. So what I want to do is I want to take a couple of minutes and I want to work through a couple of charts with you uh, that will hopefully help you understand these four different Gospels, uh, but it just being one good news. It'll help you understand just a little bit better. Now in the, in the message, you may have seen uh, a very simple chart that is uh, four different columns. Each column is each one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we start out that Matthew was a tax collector. He, he wrote specifically to Jews. In fact, Matthew himself was a Jew writing to Jews, and he was a tax collector. Matthew is the most structured of all four Gospels, and he was writing specifically to the Jews with the message that Jesus is the Messiah. You see, God's people had the Old Testament, they had the prophets, they, they had this hope and this expectation and this promise of the Savior, the, Messi- the Messiah, to come. And Matthew was writing to those people specifically saying that, hey, Jesus is the Messiah. So Matthew's angle of approach is going to be very different than the other three Gospels. Now we go to the Gospel of Mark. Mark is actually a missionary. He's not a tax collector. He's a missionary. And he's not writing to the Jews. He's writing to the Romans. And and he is the most dramatic of the four Gospels. And the the position that, that... that Mark takes is that the gospel of, a, of the suffering son of God. You see, because Mark was writing to the Romans, the Romans weren't expecting or waiting for a Messiah. They don't care about the Messiah. But it's interesting, the angle of approach, the way that, that Mark positions Jesus, he positions him as this servant. Well, here's one thing about the Romans. The Romans loved to be served. As they went around the world conquering, they took all kinds of people as as slaves, and they built the empire on the backs of slaves. And and for them to hear about somebody who wanted to serve them, well, that's a way to get their attention because that's something that they knew. But the Messiah meant nothing to them. Here's another one, Luke. Luke was not a tax collector or a missionary. Luke was a physician. Luke was a doctor. Luke was not writing to the Jews, not writing to the Romans. Luke was writing to the Greeks. The Greeks had a very different mindset from the Jews and the Romans. And and Luke is the most thematic of all four Gospels, and he positions Jesus as, as the Savior of all people. So those three Gospels, different writers, different professions, different audiences, different positions. In fact, one of the things we see with these three Gospels is Matthew, Mark, and Luke all bring out the humanity of Jesus. See, Jesus is fully man and fully God. And, and, and these three Gospels really highlight the humanity of Jesus. So now we move over to the Gospel of John, though. And John is a different Gospel, different author to a different audience with different background, with a different theme, with a different message. So if there's going to be a difference between what Matthew, Mark, or Luke say from John, well, that's why. So John, who was John? John was a fisherman. He wasn't a tax collector or a missionary or a physician. He was a a fisherman. He wrote pretty much to a general audience, to all people, although he was the most theological. And the way the Gospel of John is positioned is, is positioning that the divine Son, Jesus, is the one who reveals the Father. In fact, whereas the, Matthew, Mark, and Luke focus on the humanity of Jesus, the Gospel of John focuses on the divinity of Jesus, the fact that he is the Son of God, that he is God. So that's just the, kind of a quick introduction to the different, uh, four different Gospels. I want to look at a couple of more charts with you. These are from a couple of events that I teach through Walk Through the Bible. Some of this information is going to be repeated, but uh, just here, look, look at this one. Why four Gospels? You can see along the top, you've got the Hebrews, Romans, Greeks, and Christians. And then along the left-hand column, there's a focus, personality, activities, uh, goal, and then the gospel itself. So Matthew, we already know, he wrote to the Hebrews or the Jews. Well, the focus of the the Jews, they were very much focused on the past, on on the past and, and tradition. In fact, we see down at the bottom there the goal. The goal was to preserve a lot of tradition positioning Jesus as the Messiah. They were very emotional people, so there was more of an emotional tone. Their activities, they were very much based on religion, keeping the law. 
So, so Matthew is connecting all these things, and their authority was the commands, the commands from the law, God's commands. Well, then you look in the column uh, to the Romans, where Mark wrote to the Romans, very different. Their focus was on the present, right here, right now. They don't really care so much about the past. They're, they were very much people of the will. Emotion wasn't so much, but it was about the will. Their activities were not about religion, but construction. They're building all kinds of things. And then authority, well, Caesar was the ultimate authority. And then their goal was, was domination. They were dominating the known world at this time. Well, then we look at the Greeks. Luke wrote to the Greeks. They were very future oriented. And they're, they were very much focused on the mind, not necessarily the will or the emotion, but on the mind. Therefore, their activities, education, was very important to them. And their authority was culture. The Greek culture was, was so important at this time. In fact, uh, we, we talked previously in the series about the Hellenization of the world. And when Alexander conquered the known world, he brought the Greek culture to the world with the goal, again, being culture, culture spreading. And then you look at the Gospel of John. It's really talking to all people and and wanting to talk to Christians so that people would come to know Jesus as God's Son and put their hope and trust in Him. And the focus of, of the Gospel of John is on eternity. Not past, present, or future, but long term future, as in eternity. And the personality focuses a lot on the spirit. The, the activity of the time is, is evangelism, is sharing the message with people. And the authority that we see from John, Christ is the authority. And then the goal of John is revelation, revelation of the truth, the truth of who Jesus is and what he did and what it means for us. So again, these are different uh, aspects of looking and understanding at the four different Gospels. Here's one more. It's a comparison of the four Gospels. Again, some of these things we've already looked at. I showed you the first chart as a very high-level summary, but here Matthew was a tax collector. Uh, he originally wrote to the Jews. A key verse from the, the Gospel of Matthew is Matthew 4.17 that says, from then on Jesus began to preach, repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. And what we find, a key feature within Matthew is, is that there are a lot of sermons. we got the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, it's arranged very topically. I mentioned earlier that it's very structured out of uh, the four Gospels. Uh, the tone is prophetic. There is a genealogy in Matthew. There's not a genealogy in every Gospel, but there's a genealogy. And then if you, if you look down uh, towards the bottom of that chart, unique, a percent of unique material. This has to do with... When it feels like, and you're like, did I read that in one of the other Gospels? Well, yeah, you did. There's 42% unique material in Matthew, only 7% unique material in Mark, and then 59% unique material in the Gospel of Luke. Again, Mark is the shortest of all Gospels. Mark was writing to the, to the Romans. They wanted to be quick. You see that word immediately several times when you read through the Gospel of Mark. Speaking of Mark, again, the, the key verse there is Mark 10, 45, which says, For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and give his life as a ransom for many. See, this is this connection, again, between Matthew talking about the Messiah and the kingdom versus Mark talking about Jesus as the servant and giving his life as a ransom. It's uh, chronological, outstanding features, miracles. It's very practical. And uh, Luke was a physician. The key verse that we see in Luke is Luke 19:10. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. That's the key, key verse there from, from Luke and the focus of the book. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, the lost people. Jesus came for them. It's also chronological. There's a historical tone to it. Luke has, has a genealogy that goes all the way back to Adam. Matthew just goes to Abraham, but this one goes all the way to the beginning with the first man, Adam. And then finally, John, the, the key verse from John is John twenty thirty one. The disciples saw Jesus do many other miraculous signs in addition to the ones recorded in this book. So Jesus, his miracles, the focus of him on the, the divinity of Jesus really comes out in the gospel of John. It has a spiritual tone. There is no genealogy uh, in, in this. In fact, it starts out in the beginning was the word, whereas Matthew and Luke go back to the genealogy. But the group of people that John was writing to, it wasn't so important to connect 
the genealogy of Jesus like it was when Matthew was writing to God's people. And then John, though, is 93% unique material. So, so this is why we, we have a lot of things in John that maybe didn't show up in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. So, it, so hopefully this is helpful to, to understand why are there four Gospels? Well, four different men from four different backgrounds wrote to four different audiences about the good news, about Jesus Christ, who he is, what he came to do, and what it means for us. So I hope this is helpful in understanding a, 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 some of the cultural and background context as we approach understanding the story that we find in the message of the Gospels.